In the beginning, there was only Namu, the great goddess of all that existed. Years passed and the goddess Namu begot and gave birth to two gods, Anu, god of paradise, and Ki, goddess of the earth. Both were united as one being, and so for thousands of years, the gods lived together, because since their birth the goddess Nama had given them to the world as one, and since then heaven and earth remained united. Both grew to complement each other, and in time consummated their love, from which Enlil, god of the winds, was born. Both were happy with the arrival of their firstborn, but as soon as he came into this world, the little god Enlil separated his parents forever. Enlil took his father Anu and took him upwards, separating him from his beloved Ki. Then he took his mother Ki and took her downwards, so far away from Anu that they could not even touch each other anymore, and so in the universe heaven and earth were separated. Anu was the father god and after the birth of his son Enlil, he had affairs with the goddess Namu, who later gave birth to the god Enki product of their union. Eventually, Enki became an important partner for Enlil, with whom he formed the great triad of great gods, along with his father Anu. When Enlil grew up, he became the successor of his father Anu, becoming the supreme leader of his pantheon, and one of the most powerful and respected gods in the universe. It was said that no one could be above the god and that his throne should always be higher than the throne of the other gods, because he was the highest lord and prince Dam of the gods with his great power. In addition, all the gods prostrated before him and showed fear. Enlil was the supreme ruler of the universe, and his influence was so great because he had in his possession the sinister and coveted tablets of destiny. This divine artifact was made of clay, and in it was written the entire history of the universe. The power of these objects was such that any being who had them in his possession could control the cosmos because there was legally and permanently ratified supreme authority to rule the entire universe to anyone who possessed them. For thousands of years, creation was in charge of the lesser gods, for they were the ones who served the main gods and maintained all order in the world. On earth, the lesser gods performed various hard and cruel tasks to satisfy the needs of all the gods. Enlil sent his descendants to drain rivers, work the land, prepare food, and do the heaviest and most painful jobs that the other chiefs could think of. So many years of forced labor, and above all of the cruel mistreatment by the great gods, had tired the servants, so full of fury they rebelled. Their anger was huge, they were all exhausted from being the servants of their superiors, so they began to seek help to be supported with their demands, and so they went to several primordial gods, with their deep complaints. Several of the gods rejected them, challenging them to return to their work, and many others, on the other hand, sided with them, the lesser gods were demanding freedom. So, they joined forces to go to the temple of the god Enlil to present their complaints, and to demand a solution to all the mistreatment they had received for thousands of years. The revolts were growing every day, and the noise of the rebellious gods echoed in the temple of Enlil who from his throne listened to the cries of resentment of his subjects. The great god Enlil was very concerned about the great disturbances that were happening at the gates of his temple, so he immediately called Nuska, his vizier, to give him advice on the tragic situation. Nuska advises him to gather the gods to resolve the matter as soon as possible, otherwise he could lose his sovereignty and also reports everything that the minor gods demanded, and in their eagerness to be heard had formed. So, Enlil sent to the tumult of gods to find out who was the leader of the rebellion to his advisor, to resolve the riots. Nuska went to inspect and find out who was the leader of the gods for such demands, and on hearing the requests of the subjects was perplexed. Each of the gods has declared war, Belitili. The mother goddess is with us. We demand that they let the mother goddess create the offspring, and let man bear the burden of the gods, said the Aguigi. Enlil's faithful advisor returned with the disturbing news to the temple and told him that the gods were furious, so he should take action at that moment. So, the great wind god decided to gather the major gods in an assembly to ask their advice about what was happening. His father, Anu, recommended he make peace with all the gods to preserve his great government because things could get out of control and chaos would take over the universe and destroy it. So Enlil had no choice but to allow the creation of humanity. So, among all the primordial gods, they generated their descendants, molded them, advised them, and left them on earth. 
In the beginning, they were very few, but as the years went by, they grew and grew, and so, at last, they were given the sacred mandates that they had to fulfill to the full, for the stability of creation and that of the gods. In addition, they were told that if they did not comply with the rules imposed by the gods, they would be punished eternally. So humans served the gods with great banquets and sacrifices in their honor, worked the land, and took care of it, so the gods could finally rest, as men were in charge of their hard work. For many years the creation of mankind seemed to be one of the best decisions of the gods, however, Enlil was not entirely happy. From the beginning he did not agree with the idea of creating an inferior descendant, and although men had facilitated the tasks of the gods, becoming their faithful servants, a new problem arose. As the years passed, Enlil saw a great problem, for a little more than a thousand years had passed and the population on earth had increased too much, and with them, in the heavens, their murmuring increased. The noise of the men was getting bigger and bigger to such an extent that the annoying sound was even booming in the ears of the god Enlil. Enlil was furious about the noise of the crowd, the god felt that this annoying sound did not let him live, and as time went by this noise grew much more. However, Enlil believed that it would cease, so at that time he did nothing against humanity, until it became a deafening roar for the great god Enlil, because even on nights when he wanted to rest, they did not let him sleep. So, the god, full of fury, gathered the great gods to express his complaint and told them, The noise of humanity has become too great, and I lose sleep with the disturbances so we will give the order for the great Sarupa to explode. I wish to end the din that does not let me sleep, and that means exterminating humanity. The other gods agreed with Enlil's decision, for they too were tired of the unbearable noise of men, so they supported Enlil's plan and allowed a great plague to be unleashed upon the earth to wipe out mankind. When the sentence of the god Enlil came true, and the great plague touched the earth, thousands of people suffered and died cruelly every day, Men screamed bloody with pain and begged the gods for their salvation. The great god Enki seeing the cruel suffering of mankind, took pity on a man who addressed his prayers to him day and night. That man was Atrahasis the wise. Mighty god Enki have mercy on your faithful worshippers. We need the pain and suffering to cease on earth, for soon there will be no man left on earth, said Atrahasis. Enki hearing his words came to him and gave him great advice that would save mankind and Enki said to him, Tell all men to address all supplications and prayers to the god Namtar, who is the god of plague, so as soon as he hears that all their prayers are for him, he will feel ashamed for stealing the prayers of the other gods, and so he will remove all plagues from the earth. And so, just as the god Enki had advised, Atrahasis did so and in a short time, the great god Namtar removed all the plagues from the earth thus stopping the massive death and suffering that was being experienced. Enlil saw what happened and allowed it, for in that time of pestilence a great part of humanity had died, so he felt satisfied. However, he warned men about the noise and told them that he would not endure the same situation again, so he threatened to destroy them if they corrupted his commandments. Thousands more years passed then, and again the population had grown enormously. The volume of mankind's noise was too loud so that again, Enlil could not fall asleep every time he tried to sleep, as mankind was so large that their noise was much worse than the first time. Enlil made the decision again, but this time he did not consult with anyone, for he did not want the other gods to interfere with his decision. So, Enlil went to the god Adad, god of rain and thunder, to ask his help with his malicious plan, Enlil told Adad not to send to the earth not a single cloud, and not a single drop of rain, to punish humans with a great drought, which would cause famine and death on earth, so that at last men would become extinct and the noise would end. Adad, at the orders of Enlil, let everything on earth dry up, interrupted the rains, removed the clouds and a great infernal drought hit the fields, destroying crops and drying up rivers and springs, giving way to a merciless famine, which killed thousands and thousands of humans as Enlil wished in the beginning. However, seeing the suffering of men, Atrahasis appealed to Enki's solidarity again and begged him to take pity on mankind. Then Enki saw the pure heart of Atrahasis and told him to do the same as he had advised him to do in the past, and thus the suffering on earth would cease. So Atrahasis told the people to pray for the god Adad, and in a short time the problem was solved, 
for the rains returned and the famine ended. And just as the first time, the population was too small and the noise of men was tiny, so Enlil managed to fall asleep and was quiet. The years passed, and the calm was evident, and Enlil was satisfied with the humans. But when only about a thousand years had passed, again the noise of humanity bothered the great god, and this time his fury was too great because the noise was worse than ever. The uproar of men on earth was so terrible that there was no power to control it. So, this time Enlil was determined to end humanity, and this time he would not let anyone stand in the way of his catastrophic decision, so he summoned all the gods in his temple. Once the assembly of the gods heard the gods' angry words, they had no choice but to accept the macabre designs and orders. Enlil told all the gods that he would deprive humans of all sources of life so that they would finally become extinct, and he designated a part of the earth to a god to be its guardian so that men would not be allowed to pass to its resources. Thus, Enlil told the god Anu and the god Adad to guard the heavens, and not to allow the rains to touch the earth. To Enki, he said that he should be the guardian of the waters, and should do the same as his father, and finally, he said that he would be the guardian of the earth. At that time, the gods took their place ordered by Enlil, and began to deprive men of the gifts of nature. However, from his post Enki secretly continued to help men, for he warned them of all the evil that was to come, and told them to store up plenty of food and provisions for the difficult years that were to come. Then, after a few months, famine came upon the land, and at last the wishes of Enlil were coming to pass, for year by year the resources of men were dying out, and so with them life itself, there was no more food on earth to fill their stomachs, and their suffering was tenacious. Atrahasis begged Enki to help him again because he had saved mankind in the past, so he had the hope that he could still do it, because on earth there was nothing to survive and if the situation continued in this way, soon humans would cease to exist. Enki decided to help him and told him that soon he would send a lot of fish into the water so that they could feed and survive and so secretly for a short time Enki was helping humanity, so they stopped agonizing and deaths ceased. On the other hand, Enlil was very disconcerted by what was happening, because men seemed to increase and not decrease, and decided to investigate to see the cause, so as soon as he spied all the gods, he saw that the traitor of his designs was his brother Enki, so he unleashed his great fury on him, claimed for his actions and as punishment told him that he would be the one to end humanity. At that moment Enlil told his brother that as punishment he should unleash a great flood that would wipe out all humanity on earth, and this time he would be very attentive so that he would not disobey, and thus ruin his plans. So, with deep pain, Enki sent a great flood that promised to end everything on earth. A great flood was unleashed on humanity, which would never be seen and from which no one would be saved. But in a small oversight of the great god Enlil, Enki called Atrahasis to give him the news of the great catastrophe that was about to happen, involving life on earth and humanity from extinction. Before the great flood touched the earth, Enki revealed to the wise Atrahasis what was about to be fulfilled, and so he ordered him to build a great vessel and to store plenty of food and animals, for a new beginning of mankind when the great flood subsides. So, in that course, Atrahasis together with his wife built what the god had recommended, and when the fury of the great god and Lil touched the earth, they managed to save themselves and lived to mark a new beginning ordered by Enki. In Lil, the wind god was happy for his decision, for he would no longer hear noise on earth to annoy him thanks to the great punishment he unleashed on the earth. However, as soon as he looked and looked at what he had done, he saw a boat wandering over the descending waters. And with a great cry he made the earth tremble, for his anger was terrible. Without hesitation Enlil thought that what he had witnessed had been the work of Enki, so with his terrible fury he lashed out against his brother. However, amid the contest Enki managed to calm the anger of his brother, and convinced him to mark a new beginning that would guarantee their peace. Enlil convinced by the words of his brother, agreed to listen to his proposal and not to end the lives of Atrahasis and his consort who were the only survivors. Thus. All the gods dictated that Atrahasis and his wife would be the parents of the new advent of humanity, as they proved to be pure and noble people, and thus the gods gave immortality to Atrahasis and his wife. Enlil, on his part, reflected on how men would not multiply as the last time, 
for he wished to have peace. And this time he would make sure that humanity would not get out of control. Thus, he dictated that a third of the women and men would be sterile. And so the stragglers would continue serving the gods for all eternity. A new beginning had been marked in creation. But this time the gods would make sure that humans would not generate so many conflicts that would disturb their tranquility. Enlil as god of the wind loved to travel around the world. And during his youth, on one of his many trips he met a beautiful goddess. He was mesmerized by her beauty and charm. The young woman was the goddess Nilil who was bathing alone in a beautiful river in the city of Kippur. While she was immersed in the river, the young woman heard a strange noise. So she got scared and decided to get out immediately. As soon as she got out, she looked to the sides to see what it was about. And so she realized that behind the bushes of the place a man was spying on her and looking at her with desire. Nilil, very frightened, shouted and told him to go away, because she wanted to be alone. However, Enlil did not hear the words of the young woman and blinded by his lust, slowly approached the river to be near her. The beautiful goddess Nilil managed to fully see the being who was harassing her, and she noticed that it was the god Enlil, so she kept warning him to stay away, for she wanted nothing to do with him. You are so beautiful, come with me, give me a kiss, and lie down with me said Enlil with eyes of desire. Frightened, Nilo replied, I am too young to kiss any man, and I will not lie with you. When she finished her words, the goddess turned her back to Enlil, and seeing the total rejection of the beautiful young woman, the wind god walked away and left. Back to his temple, he thought about how he could conquer the beautiful woman, so he remembered Nuska his main government advisor, and decided to go to look for him to ask for his help. When he arrived and called Nuska, he said, Do you know that beautiful woman who walks along the river every day? Her name is Neen Lil, the most beautiful woman in the whole universe, and I wish to know more about her. Tell me, does she have any other suitors? Then Nuska, with a smile on her face, replied, Get into my boat in Lil. I will show you and give you Neen Lil. So, they set off down the river to reach the beautiful goddess who was always strolling along the river. Have you kissed anyone before? Enlil asked Nuska. However, Nuska replied by telling him to be patient, for he would be very pleased with the beautiful goddess who captivated him with her beauty. All the way Enlil was telling his vizier that he was so in love with the goddess, that he wanted so much to be with her, to kiss her and make her his, and keep her with him forever. On the other hand, Nilil, when she arrived home, had told her what happened in the river to her mother, and she, too frightened and worried for the safety of her beloved daughter, told her to stay away from the river, that she should not bathe there anymore because the god Enlil would most certainly come back for her until he could satisfy her pleasures. Ninlil listened to her mother but believed that she was exaggerating and that she would be fine. So that day, she returned to the river to walk and bathe as every day. The young girl was enchanted in the calm waters of the great tributary until she saw a peculiar vessel approaching, and in it were two men on watch. And Lil cried out, There is the beautiful woman I want to kiss, and quickly reached her, approached, and took her as his own. Ni Lil was paralyzed and very frightened, for what her mother had warned her about at last happened, and no one was there to save her. And Lil took the woman and squeezed her tightly to finally end up kissing her with desire and lust. There the passionate god took Ni Lil against her will because she had refused from the beginning to become the mistress of the god. Finally, Enlil was satisfied, because he had managed to get the most beautiful of the goddesses and had her with him forever. Shortly after the god managed to sleep with the innocent Nilil, and the fruit of their union, the young goddess had become pregnant. Nilil had no choice but to stay with the one who would now be her husband because she was expecting a child from him. So she stayed with the god, and so after several months Enlil's firstborn was born, who was named Nana, becoming the god of the moon. Enlil, for his part, continued with his exaggerated travels around the world, and so he decided to visit the temple of the gods, however. As soon as he entered the place he was perplexed because the gods had learned of all the misdeeds that the god had committed, so they had ordered to look for him. When they saw Enlil enter the Kiyuar several royal guards rushed upon him to capture him, for the gods had ordered his arrest to be condemned for the terrible faults he had committed, and as soon as they arrested him, they took him to the assembly of the gods and told him, You are no longer pure, 
you have committed a terrible fault and it will not be forgiven, so you must receive your sentence in the underworld. Thus, Enlil was expelled and banished from heaven and earth, and sent to the realm of the dead to receive his punishment. On the other hand, Nilo was very worried about her husband, because she had a terrible feeling, so she went out to look for him. While on her way to the great Kiyuar temple, Nilo saw her husband being taken to the gates outside the city, so she decided to go after him and stop him. However, the young Nilo did not succeed, for when she reached the said gates, she did not catch up with him. Nilo wanted the god to take care of her, for he had already been with the young girl and had stripped her of her home, so she should be with him wherever Enlil was. Enlil, very astute, realized that Nilo was looking for him, so he thought of a plan so that he would not be condemned again by the gods, and be with the beautiful goddess again. So as soon as he arrived at the gates of the city he said to the guard, If you see the woman who is about to arrive if she asks for me tell her that you do not know where I went or where I am. As soon as he finished saying that sentence, immediately the great god and Lil took the body of the guard to take advantage of the beautiful Ni Lil. Being already at the gates of the city, Ni Lil went to the guard and asked, Do you know where Enlil has gone? To which the guard said, I don't know my lady, I don't know where he is. Nilo was too sad, for she did not know where Enlil had gone so now, she had to continue her search until she found him and be with him. The guard, who in reality was Enlil, began to seduce her with many deceptions until he finally succeeded in consummating his passion for the young goddess. After they had been together, Nilo announced to him that she was expecting a son and that in a few months Nurgle would be born, who would become the god of war and the underworld. Without thinking after her son was born, Nilo decided to continue with the hard task of searching for Enlil, since no one answered his whereabouts. On the other hand, as soon as his son Nurgle was born, the god Enlil decided to continue his journey to the underworld, so he left the place of the guardian of the city to continue on his way, but not before making sure that his beloved Nilil continued on his quest. So, Nilo continued with the journey, and this time he went to the Edkara, the great river that flows between the world of the living and the underworld. For he was told that Enlil was most likely on his way to the realm of the dead, and as soon as he reached the murky tributary, Nilo saw a mysterious house beside the great Edkara. A man of nauseating and cadaverous aspect was coming out of that hut, and Nilo, without hesitation approached him to ask him about Enlil, so the young goddess asked him, Where has Enlil gone? But the man who lived by the river said he did not know, and so the story was repeated just like that with the guardian of the gates of Nippur. Nilil became pregnant again by Enlil, who had taken the place of the man who lived beside the Edkara, and by trickery the young goddess bore her third son, who was named Ninazu who became the god who sets the boundaries of the fields, and lord of the waters. Enlil continued his journey to the underworld, Nilil was aware of the deception, and seeing that his lord was gone decided to follow him, continued his journey and walked placidly along the banks of the great Edkara until he saw an old boatman rowing through the waters of the tributary. Then she called out to him and said, Noble man, have you seen where Enlil went? And the boatman said, I have not seen him, and I don't know where he is either. Then the man offered to take her down the river inviting her to get into his little boat. Nilil got in and in the middle of the trip, she was deceived again because the man had been supplanted by Enlil as he had done before with the others. And so he managed to join the beautiful Nilil leaving her pregnant again. During her journey to the underworld, her son Enbilula was born, who became the god of the canals, and thus the last three sons of Enlil became the three gods of the underworld, and their father, the god Enlil was left to receive his punishment in the realm of the dead.